Hello guys and welcome back. This is the first of a few videos that I'm going to do about echocardiographic modalities. I want to start with 2D echo and how to optimize the images. So let's start. Since cardiac ultrasound was introduced into the medical practice, Transthoracic echocardiography has developed to become a highly sophisticated and widely performed cardiac imaging modality in the diagnosis of heart disease. Now, cardiac ultrasound is a complex modality capable of detailed cardiac assessment. The adult transthoracic echocardiogram has evolved to become a comprehensive assessment of complex cardiac anatomy, function, and hemodynamics. So, what is an echocardiogram? An echocardiogram is a test that shows how the heart muscle and valves are working. This test uses high-frequency sound waves to make pictures of your heart. 2D imaging is the mainstay of echo imaging and allows structures to be viewed moving in real time. It's a very versatile modality because it's portable, very easy to use and at a low cost. We use 2D imaging to assess the cardiac function on a daily basis. Also, we can assess any abnormalities of the structures. Some of the cross-sectional views we use to assess the heart are the parasternal long axis view, the parasternal short axis view, and the apical views. As I said before, two-dimensional echocardiography allows a full assessment of cardiac structure, function, and hemodynamics. With 2D imaging, we can see the presence of left ventricular dysfunction, wall motion abnormalities, hypertrophy, or chamber enlargement. That's why two-dimensional echocardiography has become an important diagnostic procedure in the practice of cardiology because it can be used to demonstrate an accurate anatomic and functional analysis of the heart. How the image is produced? In 2D echocardiography, the ultrasound beam sweeps across the plane, sending ultrasound wave impulses and receiving the reflected signals from different structures. In that sense, 2D echocardiography shows real-time images of the heart. As the ultrasound beam sweeps through the tomographic plane, the information is received by the transducer and forward for processing. A high frame rate is desirable for accurate display of cardiac movement. Most echo machines include a function for automatic two-dimensional image optimization. However, this often requires additional fine adjustment. That's why it's essential that echocardiographers possess a complete understanding on how to manually optimize a 2D imaging, color flow dopplers, and spectral doppler displays. When possible, the transthoracic echocardiography should be performed in an environment that enables acquisition of the best available image quality. It's important to have good facilities to ensure patient's privacy and to allow the patient to be positioned in the left lateral decubitus position. It's recommended to have a specialized couch for scanning a couch with a drop-down segment that provides better access to the apex. In order to avoid injuries, the echocardiogram should be performed on a special couch, in an appropriate setting and space, and with a special scanning chair. The first feature we can adjust to optimize the image 
is changing the frequency of the transducer. The transmit frequency refers to the operating frequency of the imaging transducer. If you increase the frequency, you will get a better image resolution but with limited depth penetration. Lower scanning frequencies are able to penetrate deeper into the body but provide lower image resolution. Fundamentally, image resolution at higher frequencies is superior in both axial and lateral planes. Modern ultrasound systems allow the operator to adjust transmit frequency in order to optimize the image quality. It's recommended to achieve optimal image resolution, a high scan frequency is selected initially and reduced when further signal penetration is required. This is the main screen of the GE E95. At the bottom, you can find the frequency selection. Our next feature is the focus. Even when some systems utilize an automatic focus, manual adjustment of the focal point improves lateral resolution of the image. The focus should be continually adjusted during the scan to be positioned over the region of interest within the image. On the left side, we have the Philips Epic and on the right side, we have the Philips CX50. In both keyboards, the focus button is on the right side. In this picture, I'm showing you how I move the focus during the scan. On the left side, I'm adjusting the focus to concentrate on the left atrium. On the right side, I'm adjusting the focus to concentrate on the left ventricle. Some systems use the automatic focus and the operator cannot adjust this feature. Another important feature is the harmonics. The harmonics were discovered by accident during the development of contrast ultrasound. The use of harmonic imaging has become routine during echocardiography. The benefit of harmonics is that provides a superior image resolution even with lower frequencies. Because harmonic imaging enhances the signal, caution should be taken when interpreting the thickness of the leaflets, as harmonic imaging can lead to false appearance of increased thickness. Modern imaging systems allows the selection of harmonic imaging. This means that you can turn the harmonics on or off. The image on the right side is brighter and appears thicker. This is why we have to be careful when interpreting the valves if the harmonics are on. Another important feature of image optimization is the gain. When you increase the gain, the overall image results brighter. When you lower the gain, the overall image appears darker. In most of the machines, we can adjust the gain by moving the 2D button. When adjusting the gain, just make sure that the blood pool remains dark and that the endocardial border is well defined. Some ultrasound systems provide the facility for automatic image optimization with just pressing a simple button. For this example, we have here the Philips Epic machine and the very popular iScan button. The overall gain adjusts the brightness of the image quality through the entire sector. This is an example of how the image is affected when you have low gain, adequate gain, or high gain. 
Another feature is the TGC. The time gain compensation controls are usually set up as a series of pods that can be adjusted to amplify a particular portion of the image. This control is used to make up for energy loss due to attenuation. We also can adjust the LGC, lateral gain compensation. This compensates differences in echo strength by allowing higher amplification of the weaker lateral signal. Although TGC and LGC controls might be a time-saving feature for the operator, it should be used as a starting point for image optimization and not viewed as a definitive image adjustment. Our next feature is the depth. The depth setting of the image indicates how far into the body the ultrasound system attempts to detect anatomy. The depth and the sector width are settings that may also influence the frame rates. Because the heart is a moving structure, higher frame rates are desirable to increase temporal resolution especially for rapidly moving structures. A large sector depth may reduce the image quality. And a narrower sector angle may be appropriate in some circumstances to enhance the image quality. We can find the depth button on the keyboard of any ultrasound systems. Here I'm showing you how I adjust the depth during the scan. From the apical four chamber view, I reduce the depth to focus on the left ventricle before to measure the ejection fraction by Simpson's method. Another feature to optimize the image is the sector size or width. This controls the angle of the sector displayed on the monitor. The wider the sector size, the lower is going to be the frame rate, affecting the image quality. We can normally find these features on the lower part of the screen. Here I'm showing you how I adjust the sector size during the scan. On the left side, I'm measuring the inferior vena cava, and during this view, I like to increase the sector size. On the right side, I'm measuring the diameter of the abdominal aorta, and during this view, I like to decrease the sector size. Another important feature is the zoom or magnification control. This results in simple magnification of an anatomic structure. You can always find the zoom button on the keyboard of any ecosystem. This is an example on how I use the zoom or the magnification feature during the scan. In this case, from the parasternal long axis view, I'm zooming the left ventricular outflow tract to measure the diameter. If you follow me on Instagram, you must know already that this is one of my favorite image optimization tools, and it's called colorization or color maps. This is basically an option for colorization of the image. When you use this feature, the image is transformed to a different range of colors, like sepia, blue, green, or red instead of grays. Colorization is really a personal preference, but some technicians feel that the colorized image demonstrates certain pathologies better to their eye than the grayscale image. You can see here how the bicuspid aortic valve looks well defined and brighter in a yellowish color. 
Our next feature is the tilt, and this is the lateral orientation of the image sector. This facilitates the exploration of peripheral structures with better axial resolution. Here I'm showing you how I adjust the tilt during the scan. On the left side, I'm tilting the image towards the left atrium. And on the right side, I'm tilting the image towards the right atrium. This allows me to concentrate on those structures obtaining a better axial resolution. Believe it or not, the freeze bottom is another image optimization feature because this allows the operator to stop the moving hard display and then select a single frame of interest in order to measure or acquire. Normally, we can find the freeze button next to the trackball as you can see on the image. Our last feature and the most important one is the trackball because this allows the operator to move around the screen and to select a frame of interest in order to measure or acquire. I think we all know where the trackball is located but as you can see in the image, is in the middle of the panel. And to finish, I would like to talk about the limited acoustic windows. It's very normal to have a patient with limited or very poor acoustic windows. If you get a patient with very poor acoustic window, just don't panic. Don't stress about it because this is something very common, it's something that can happen to anyone and the truth is that sometimes there is nothing you can do to change it. You can have the best setting, the best couch, the best echo machine and use all the features to try to optimize the image and sometimes nothing changes and the images are still poor. In this case, I recommend you not to take unnecessary videos, unnecessary images, and especially don't do any measurements on a poor view because it's gonna be inaccurate. All the limitations of the study should be clearly documented in the report, and all the echo reports should have a description of the image quality, indicating if the windows or the views were poor adequate or good. Thank you for watching. I think this is the longest video I have made so far. And the funny thing is, this is the second time I'm recording this video because something happened with the first one and I couldn't find it. It was deleted. So well, I panic a bit, but no problem. <laughs> I just recorded the video again for you guys. I hope you like it and don't forget to subscribe. See you on another day. Bye.